let's uh, start by first, uh, let me make more precise the uh, definition of the class of the theories, that is to say, integration theories um, we want to study. So, so the quiver. gauge theories and their parameters. So you learned about quiver varieties from, uh, from, from the lectures by uh, Andrei Ekunkov. And quiver gauge theories, in a sense, is a way of, st of, this, of studying quiver varieties over the uh, over four dimensional manifold. So in some sense, we are studying uh, maps in some direct sense uh, of four dimensional manifolds into quiver varieties. Now already you've, you've heard probably the, the lecture by uh, Peter, that if you study maps of two-dimensional spaces into, into uh, queer varieties, there is a, an interesting uh, way of partially complexifying the space of maps by the so-called quasi-maps. So they are not properly maps, but they are, uh, so you make the symmetries of this, uh, the symmetries which are involved in defining the space, the symmetries you, you quotient by, you promote them to bundles of the source manifold, and then the vector spaces which you quotient by the so symmetries, uh, you make them as into fiber bundles. And then you study some uh, equations on, 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 those, on the sections of those bundles and their relations to the, to the connections in these bundles. So now if we lift this to even higher, to four dimensional sources, this is where you get the quiver gauge theory. So, so let me rephrase this in a more formal, in a more specific way. So to a quiver, gamma, which for me would be just, just an oriented graph. So we have this, this set of vertices. We have the set of oriented edges. Uh, and we have, a, we have two maps from the set of edges to the set of vertices, the source and the target of each edge. And now, uh, as in this discussion of quiver varieties, you, will not, you want to assign two vector spaces to each vertex of the quiver. Uh, so in, 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 the, in the case of the Kajima varieties, they're called V and W. I will call them M and N. So I have M space. So for each I, for each vertex, I have an N, M space and N space. complex vector spaces. So these are the parameters of the theory. So maybe this is a bad joke. Uh, this is called the space of flavors. And this is called the space of colors. This is from physics uh, of the 60s. Uh, and now, what we do with these spaces, we'll be uh, studying the moduli spaces of sheaves, so the amp quiver is the moduli space of, uh, of collections of torsion-free sheaves E sub i, so i are the vertices, or vertices of my quiver, over P2, which are um, framed. So the restriction of 
each of these shifts on a fixed line, which I call P1 at infinity. is a trivial vector bundle, isomorphic to Ni, the space Ni. Uh, and now, the structure of the quiver gives rise to uh, to the following shift of that modular space. Namely, we we'll take the direct sum over the edges of my quiver. The space, this, the, the shift of Holmes of the shift E corresponding to the source of the corresponding edge. to the shift corresponding to the target. So this is as if you were doing the quiver variety, except that now everything leaves over P2. So these homes are varying over, over, over P2. And the, the source and targets of those homes also vary. Plus, we take the sum of the vertices of homes from EI the fixed vector space mi. We'll view it as a trivial shift over p2. So that's the huge thing in terms of a definition. <laughs> uh, and now, and then we take the, the derived direct image of that. So those, this whole thing, so this is, uh, okay, I should have said that. By E now I denote the universal shift which lives over the the product. So I, by, by some abuse notation, now E i is also the universal uh, shift over the product of M gamma cross P2. So I glue them all into something universal. And then, uh, and then by pi I denote this the projection which forgets about P2. And so that gives you, if you like, a K-theory class in the, in the, um, in K-theory of the modular space. So that belongs to the, so take a class of that in K-theory of M gamma. And now in cohomology theory, which is uh, what is for so so if we talk about four dimensional theories that means that we actually interested not in k theory but in cohomology just take the Euler class the equivalent Euler class of, of that object and then we integrate over m gamma so we take uh, so let's call it uh, uh, what are the letters which we haven't used yet okay I'll call it curly t oh sorry I call it uh, Obstruction. I call it ops of gamma. And so we take the Euler class, equivalent Euler class, equivalent with respect to the symmetries, which I will now specify, and integrate over m gamma. And then sum, take the sum over all possible choices of, uh, well, uh, Actually, just, just, just that. So uh, if you watch carefully what I was saying, then you would, would, have no, would notice that, of course, M gamma is a, it's not a, it's, a di it's, a, it's an infinite dimensional space because it has, a com it has infinitely many components of varying dimensions which are, which are labeled by the uh, second chain class of, of those shifts. So if you specify them, then you have, then you have uh, connected components of the modular spaces, and we sum over those connected components uh, with the weights which are denoted by Q slash. So Q 
u vector to the power k vector is, is the product of the vertices of my quiver, qi to the power ki. OK, so the first set of parameters which this formula introduces is the uh, torus Uh, the torus of uh, gauge couplings, so gauge couplings, so this is C star, actually we want them to be sufficiently small uh, to the power, the vertices of gamma. So this is where my Q parameters live. You have a complex number, absolute value less than equal less than one attached to every, every vertex. And maybe for, for general quiver, we actually should view them as formal parameters. We don't really expect any convergence of, of this partition function uh, unless we can ensure some relation between the ranks of the spaces M and N, which actually force the quiver to be a very special type. But at this level, we can, we can always think of this as a formal power series, and then the theory uh, makes sense. Now, the other parameters are the uh, equivalent parameters corresponding to the symmetries of general linear transformations of m spaces and n spaces. So we have also GL m i and GL and I spaces, uh, uh, groups, which act simply at, at, in these spaces. So for N, it acts as, so the GLN actually acts on the modular space by changing the choice of the framing, the choice of this isomorphism. The, uh, well, PGLN part actually acts. The, uh, the GLM only acts on the fibers of this uh, 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 bundle, and so the act, it, it acts on the, on the space of sections and, and higher homologies. Uh, so it, so it, it is reflected in the parameters of the Euler class. So this Euler class is equivalent. And so I will denote the, so we'll have the parameters which belong to the real algebra of the maximal torus of, of that group. So we'll call these parameters M's. So this will be uh, the masses, we call the masses. We heard about them in Andre's talk today. And then this will be the A parameters. They are called Coulomb parameters, like the Coulomb law, <coughs> Coulomb module. This is some convenient jargon. So the number of those parameters, so A is labeled by, these are complex numbers labeled by two labels. One is a vertex, and another uh, runs from, so alpha runs from one to the dimensionality of the space N, and M also has two labels, so F runs from 1 to MI. So these are, all, so these are the, uh, the parameters of this partition function. And then we will also be working equivalently with respect to the following two symmetries. So one symmetry acts on these spaces. So for each edge, you can formally, you can rescale the space of Holmes acting from the source to the target of the edge by, by complex number. And so that gives an additional set of masses that gives an additional set of masses labeled by the edges. Uh, 
So we have a group C star. So these are called bifundamental. masses and so that's the symmetry which multiplies that space by, by a complex number most of the symmetry is redundant it's already contained in, in these symmetries because uh, so if you have a home from from this from the source uh, to the target some of these transformations you can mimic by, by making a, a rotation in the n space. Uh, so, if for example, if you, if you don't do anything at, at the source and you just multiply your target by a complex number, that's effectively multiplying the arrow by a complex number. So, what it does, so what it means is, is actually you have the quotient, you have to quotient this space by the. Uh, so you, you quotient that group by the uh, maximal torus, by the center, sorry, by the center uh, of one of these groups. It doesn't really matter which one. And so effectively, the space of bifundamental masses is in one-to-one -one correspondence. So this is, uh, you can calculate, so this is the... Uh, well, there is o the overall... The center of all the, the, the diagonal C star inside all the centers doesn't really act. So, so that's, that gives you the, uh, uh, the torus uh, of the rank equal to the, the first better number of the, of the quiver. So basically the number of loops. And so that's what uh, I said yesterday, that for the, for the simply connected quivers, that's, that doesn't buy you anything. But for these quivers with the loop, you actually get an important additional parameter. And that's reflected uh, in, in all kinds of things. Um, all right, so that's, uh, so that's my uh, parameters uh, as far as, the, as this space is concerned. And then there is also the symmetry of, of uh, uh, P2, preserving P1 star. That's a symmetry which we, we already talked about, and so we have the parameters epsilon 1, epsilon 2, which are the, uh, in the Lie algebra of the maximal torus of that group. So these are the rotational symmetries of P2. So we, want to be, we, so we will be working equivalently with respect to this torus, this torus, and that torus. And so that makes the partition function which is this uh, generating function of all these integrals, a function of, uh, of the fundamental masses. So these are called fundamental masses. Bifundamental masses, Coulomb moduli, the epsilon parameters, and the gauge couplings. So lots of, lots of parameters. Okay, and now, uh, I introduced the Y observables, which were, which are also, you can also define them geometrically as uh, by the similar construction, namely, you take the, uh, so this is the equivalent Euler class of, uh, of the, well, so let me just first the, do the informal definition. So this is this universal shift EI, which is restricted to a point, the fixed point. So this is the fixed point of GL2 action. Now, we don't really restrict shifts at the point. But what we can do, we can do this, uh, 
we can take the derived direct image of E tensor with the resolution of a, st of a, of a skyscraper shift. So we can tensor it with a skyscraper shift and then take the direct image. So this, what this is, is this. Do you want me to write L? <laughs> um, I forgot why. Where, 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 where this R come from? This letter R. It's derived, right? But so is, is R is in, in, in the word derived? <laughs> right, right. Ah, it's a right derived. And okay. 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 So. Um, so this is skyscraper supported at, at, as, at, 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 at zero. And that's that's a product. Yeah. So that's what this y observable is, and then you can mm -hmm. think of uh, you can think of uh, the x parameter as the uh, well you can think uh, so for me the equivalent only class is just a chern it's just a chern polynomial so so this is uh, c of x so x is just the argument of of uh, of chern polynomial which uh, we'll see is actually a, an equivalent parameter for yet another symmetry, which uh, will we'll show up shortly. And so then uh, we could study the integrals of, of these classes. Uh, and so we can insert those classes uh, in this integral, uh, or insert the products of those classes. And it turns out that, well, the, they are equal to something. We, c we cannot really say much about them. but it turns out that uh, we can correct this product of y's by uh, things involving inverse powers of y's, which will produce uh, functions of x with no singularities, except, of course, at infinity. Now. Uh, when we actually compute things we can uh, by localization at the fixed points uh, so the fixed points of the of these symmetries which i just which i'm currently racing uh, everything becomes just a function of some explicit function of of the uh, of all these parameters and the uh, some geometry of uh, involved in 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 the, in the fixed at the fixed point namely the a uh, bunch of young diagrams. Uh, well, that's uh, so y of x restricted at the fixed point. So this is now the fixed point of the maximal torus of of the of those of, of all those groups. And uh, so at the fixed point, we, we uh, can actually compute this uh, integral. And this is what it gives. So I'll give now a different expression to, from what I uh, gave yesterday, because that's an expression which will be useful, easier, will be more manageable. But it's the same expression, of course. So now it's a product over all the squares in the Young diagram. So now Young diagrams are also labeled by two indices. So i is in vertices, and alpha is in the colors. And now we have a denominator and a numerator.
notation C squared is epsilon 1 times uh, A minus 1 plus epsilon 2 times B minus 1 for the square with coordinates uh, AB. So A goes here and B goes there. So the way to remember this formula is that uh, for the top most for the top left corner, the content is equal to zero, and so and this factor should cancel that fact. So that's the way to remember uh, where to put epsilon. So that's the formula. Which uh, we, so there are a bunch of cancellations, and the true numerator of this formula only knows about so. Uh, only cares about the things which you can add to the Young diagram, and the denominator corresponds to the corners where you can remove things. But for the for the applications, it is useful to have the large x expansion of this function. So what what we can write from me, so we can immediately rewrite this as uh, so it's x to the n i. So that's the leading term. Because here you have something of degree 1. And this is just the polynomial of degree n. And then I like to rewrite this as exponential. So it's, again, a politistic exponent. So I just want to write it as a logarithm, exponential of its logarithm. And then I expand the logarithm. So use this. Uh, Uh, so here we have, uh, so it's 1 over L, someone uh, 1 to infinity. And now we have a uh, big bracket, sum over alpha. So we have minus AI alpha to the L, X to the L. That's the first term. And then uh, we have the sum over the squares. Actually, I should put x to the l outside because it's going to be everywhere. Don't worry; we will we'll only we will only use the first two terms. But uh, I want to, to want to write I want to write them explicitly. Uh, so, uh, with the plus sign, we'll get a. Let now skip the indices because they are the same. So, a plus c to the l plus a plus c plus epsilon to the L. So my notation is this epsilon is epsilon 1 plus epsilon 2. And then minus uh, a plus c plus epsilon 1 to the L minus a plus c plus epsilon 2 to the L. So let me denote this whole. Uh, so then let's do it let's do this expansion for for the first sure 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 absolutely sorry sorry uh, so let's just continue say it again okay so I'm continuing up here still it's still inequality so so this is x to the n i times exponential. So the first term, when l is equal to 1, well, everything here cancels. So you only have something from, from, from this guy. So you have 1 over x negative sum a i alpha. And then for. Uh, y is x squared. Uh, maybe I will need Do I need to expand to the third terms? Wait, where is Sambiok? Yeah. Do I need to expand to, to L equals 3? Or L equals 2 is fine? 
Yeah, so, so okay, let's see. So, we'll, uh, so I, let me expand. Let, let's, let, maybe, I'll, well, maybe we'll expand at the, at the, up to the third term. Uh, what? <laughs> okay, so it's minus uh, sum of the squares. And then here, we, we finally get something, some information about the, the partition. I probably need to, I probably want to do it up to the third term. But OK, so the, at the second term, so you have square. Uh, so of course, a plus c squared will cancel out. Then the cross terms, the, the uh, linear terms in a plus c will also cancel. And so the only thing which will not cancel will be, uh, so it's epsilon squared minus epsilon 1 squared minus epsilon 2 squared which is equal to twice epsilon 1, epsilon 2. So it's plus twice epsilon 1, epsilon 2. The size of the partition. So this is sum over alpha, sum over alpha. So it is 1 over x squared. Order, you only get the, uh, the instanton charge. So this is known as ki. And now if I do it up to the third order, a certain non-trivial feature of the of, of, part of Young diagram will, will appear, namely the sum of its contents. So that's, uh, I guess, something which I want to, to get out of this. So there will be minus the sum of cubes. And then, uh, so cube, so you need to remember now another formula x plus y cube is x cube plus. Say it again. Well, uh, maybe I don't need this. Well, maybe I don't need this number for this lecture, but. So they w but uh, just on dimensional grounds. <laughs> so there will be something like, uh, so there will be two things appearing. So there will be a sum of contents. So that's something which is, uh, you cannot extract from, um, you know, by differentiating with respect to Q, this particular function. And there will be uh, also by sim on symmetry uh, considerations, there will be epsilon multiplying K. There, is some, there will be some cof numerical coefficient, indeed. Exactly. So there will be some numbers here, which you can get from this formula. <laughs> uh, plus ta da da. OK, so this is something which we will use in, in, in various forms. But uh, how are we going to use this? Well, uh, here is the main trick. So to study these particular functions. First, we'll write an expression which uh, well, actually, so you can start with a product of the following types. So it's a product of the vertices y i when x is shifted by some number w i beta and product over beta from 1 to w i. So now the w numbers start appearing. So w numbers of the Kajima varieties. So now fix vector space, well, fix the uh, non-negative integers assigned to your, to your vertices, at least one of them should be non-negative. And uh, I'm sorry for, ter again, so I'm, I'm using one, the same letters for, for different things, but it should be kind of clear eventually what, 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 uh, what's what. So then wi sub beta is a complex number where beta is allowed to, is running from 1 to little wi. Could you call it gamma? No, it's a different number. It's a different, different, it's a different uh, parameter. 
So m, m, n, m, n, and so on, they were parameters of the theory. And now we want to define an observable in the theory, which will now have the labels, promised labels, uh, well, w, which is this collection of w, i, sub beta, of x. So it's, so, it's, so, it's, so it's an operator which, which I can study in the particular theory. So the theory which has all this n, m, a, and so on parameters, and now the, the, the operator. So this operator is defined as follows. You start with a monomial in y's, which is just product of y's at, with different shifts of the arguments. And then you start correcting them plus q dependent Corrections involving y inverse, so products of products of y's and y inverse with various shifts, <coughs> such that all poles in X cancel uh, cancel when you uh, in, in the expectation value so they cancel um, we want to cancel them of course not in the individual formula for y evaluated at, at a given partition but we want to cancel them when we sum over all partitions so we want to cancel x poles in the expectation value of chi sub w, which is defined as before. It says 1 over z, that z. Then the same sum, the same integrals, Euler of abstraction, times chi. And so now I want to write the formula for, for these corrections. And then I want to explain where, d where did they get, I mean, I got this formula for, for simplest quivers just by hand. But then I guessed, I guessed the general formula. And then I'll tell you where it, so once you guess it, then it, of course everything becomes sort of clear. So I'll, I'll explain why this formula has this form and what's the geometry behind it. Yes? So it's, yes, so it's expected uh, to in what's, yes, so, right, right, right. right. Yes. Masterclass. <laughs> In other building. <laughs> yes, so. No, 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 no. So th this is so this master class <coughs> is the modular space of crossed instantons, from which, uh, which has, uh, uh, from which we uh, these these expressions obtained by integration, and the claim is that you integrate over a compact set, and the cancellation of the poles is the consequence of the compactness uh, theorem. So global means compact in this context. Yes. <laughs> yes. I think for the AD, for the AD quivers, and maybe even for the non-simple laced. So th that I, th I think that's the content of uh, Kimura and Peston, Peston's yeah. work, that they identify QQ characters as a. Uh, as W as a, as a Q deform W algebra, which is by definition is what commutes with Q screening operators in, in some and this so the commutation with screening operators is expressed algebraically as a cancellation of poles, and so the so what's up for the, for algebraic 
uh, algebraist is, 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 is viewed as commu commuting with screening operators, geometrically screening operators represent the, the fundamental cycle of which you integrate. So that's uh, right. But uh, and then we will, so we will use this 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 feature that you have cancellation of poles. Therefore, you can expand things at infinity and and and, and uh, get interesting identities. Uh, I have a feeling this there is some similarity of this to Riemann's uh, 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 conjecture because in the, uh, no no this, but without. No, in, in the following sense, in the following sense, that if, if Riemann's conjecture is true, which is some statement about uh, maybe not a lack of poles, but uh, so some location of poles, that gives you information about the well, distribution of prime numbers in that case. But here, so we have, we have a lack of poles in, the, in, the, in, uh, in finite domain, and from that we get an information about the, uh, this partition function, which will happen to be the equations of two-dimensional conformal field theory. I mean that information. So that. Uh, um. So, I mean, well, you may laugh all <laughs> you want, but I think so. There is some compactness in 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 in, in, in zeta function as well. So, 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 okay. Uh, hidden. Somewhere. Okay. Uh, <laughs> okay. Thank you, Roma, for, for laughing. <laughs> <That's> <laughs> <a chest. laughs> All right, so here is the formula. So the formula will involve the quiver variety. Uh, <laughs> zeta? Uh, I'm not sure that's the right notation here. Uh, although, in some sense, it is a zeta function because that's, uh, again, I mean, zeta function is, is, it, is a pretistic exponent, <laughs> after all. <laughs> and, uh, I, mean, I wish somebody gave a so the, there must be some definition of, of these modular spaces and, and if, uh, you know in, 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 in all the operations involved in finite characteristics so may, and or maybe over some number of fields so, so then uh, it, it, it actually might might be interesting you know, to try to figure out uh, what's the number of can of this unfortunately my proof of the compactness theorem and actually the defin this space of crossness that us which which is behind this formula uh, is, not is not defined in algebraic geometry. So it maybe can be defined in derived algebraic, algebraic geometry, but, but this is above my pay grade. So, so, uh, so the way I defi define it is, is, is in using real algebraic geometry, and that's hard to, to translate to number, number theory context. Um, OK, so, uh, so I claim that this guy is actually so fixed for fixed uh, uh, w vector. So this is this is called the framing now in the Nakajima sense. So this is framing. In 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 the sense of the Kajima varieties, and now I want to literally study all the Nakajima varieties associated with this, fra with this framing with that same quiver gamma. So remember, that means that we now assign vector space vi to the vertices. And then we have ordinary homes. So we take homes v uh, of the source v to the target sum over the edges, and then we take the sum of Holmes wi vi. So now wi, capital wi, is a vector space of dimension little wi, and then these numbers are the eigenvalues of some operator acting in the space wi. Uh, so we take this vector space, Take its cotangent bundle, which is also a vector space, and then take the symplectic quotient with respect to the quiver gauge group, which is a product over the vertices GL. <coughs> so that's the Nakajima variety. 
corresponding to two vectors of dimensions, w and b. And uh, my, my operator chi of x is really just this, so it's a sum over all possible vectors. Um, all possible dimension vectors, so all possible representations of the quiver. Uh, the same parameters q, now raised to the power v, not k, but v. And now I want to integrate over that space, that space, equivalently with respect to the following groups. So I want, I, so I have a group, um, the framing group, so GW. So GW is the the group of changing changes of the framing, and then we have a group. Uh, I will call it the torus. So we have a torus uh, T gamma. So it again consists. So there is a C star and C star to the power B1. So this C star to the power B1, again, you, you multiply every home corresponding to the H by a complex number. The uh, element of a, du of a dual space you multiply by the inverse number. And you can do that up to the transformations which you can undo by the action of GL, by the center of, of uh, GLW. So some of these transformations, GLV. GLV. Well, yeah, but they actually and relate. Star is the power of gamma is the star of the power of no, no, no. It's a, it's a different torus. So it's it's, not, it's not. and and this guy, he just multiplies everything by the same number. Okay. So just the scale, scale, uh, scale, scale for everything. Uh, if you like the scale, the same thing uh, or equivalently just scales the cotangent bundle. So, so the maximal, t if you like, I can, here I can choose the maximal torus of, t of, 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 that, of that group. And so the parameters w, i, beta are the parameters for the torus. Uh, or rather, now this is the appearance of letter x. So I will now call, so the, uh, so x plus w, i, beta are the equivalent parameters of the framing torus of the of the of the Nikajim variety. So I just chose to shift all of them by, by, by one by the same number. So that's that's my letter X. And how do you know the where parameters for, for this big gamma? So for this guy, so this parameter will have <coughs> will be called minus epsilon 1 plus epsilon 2. So it will not be called. It will, will be identified with the minus epsilon 1, epsilon 2. So that's the same epsilon 1, epsilon 2, which we had uh, acting on that modular space. <coughs> and these parameters will be denoted by ME. So they're actually the same parameters. as the, They're the same by fundamental, by fundamental masses as, as we had before. So even though this is a different space, it's a different space from, from, from this modular space of shifts, there is already some connection between them because I have to assume that some of the symmetry parameters are the same on both sides of the, of the story. And now, so, this, so I've set up the stage, but now I need to, to, to produce the actor. So what I'm going to integrate over, the, over, this, over this variety is a product of two things. So the first factor is kind of uh, natural. So you take the equivariant, well, you take the Chern polynomial, evaluate it at the parameter epsilon 2. Again, because of the symplectic nature of that space, you can put epsilon 1. It doesn't matter. So I can write epsilon 2 or epsilon 1 of the cotangent bundle to this modular space. So this is something which we encountered yesterday, I guess, when we discussed the theory with adjoint matter. 
Uh, there it was specific for, for a particular theory. Here it's a universal factor. So we always insert the, uh, the cotangent bundle, the only class of a cotangent bundle. In K theory, This thing? This is called this sum. But this, this whole thing. This is this is this is the form this is the I'm, I'm writing the form. Times uh, sorry. My times something which will now which will know about the Y classes. And so this is the times the uh, G, I call it G class of X. So this is, um, so this requires one more definition, which, which I, uh, uh, which I uh, forgot to give. So, or maybe you, 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 maybe you, you, heard, maybe it, it, you, you, you actually heard this in the, in the lectures by Andre. Uh, so we need, uh, I need to recall the definition of tautological bundles, over the tautological complex uh, over the queer variety. So queer variety, so again, we have these arrows. Uh, at each vertex, carries, uh, carries a, a complex which reflects the moment map equation. So for this, for this, uh, uh, construction, this double line means that you impose the moment map equation and then you divide. So the canonical, canonical, or tautological complex CI over, so it's a complex of shifts, if you like. Uh, it's a complex of bundles, in fact, over, over, uh, of the Nakajima variety. So what you do at each, so I is a vertex. So at, at, at each vertex, you can play the following game. So you have, you have the space uh, VI, and then you also have the space WI. And this data involves the maps I sub I, so this is uh, what this Holmes parameterize. And the element of the dual space, which is J. And now you can, if you, if, if you have an edge which goes out, connects to some, uh, so this is some space V target of this edge. So there is a map BE which belongs to this space, and there is a map from do in the acting in the opposite direction, B, E, tilde. So uh, what you can do, you can start the space V, and then walk out of the space uh, using any arrow which, which uh, either connects this V space to the framing space, or connects to the other vertices in the quiver, and then come back so first you can you go out in all possible ways, and so you have a map from from uh, so it's like you know you become a so you start at the space v i and then you can go to your framing space, so that's using I, or using all the arrows which start at this, uh, at this vertex, or using all the arrows which end at this vertex. So here you use I, here you use B sub E, and here you use B sub E tilde. So you have, you sort of, you generate, you, you produce offsprings. And then you grow old and they come back. <laughs> Maybe. But, uh, so they come back, 
now you you take the sum. So you you you. Uh, ah. Sorry, this is J. My notation is correct. So J goes from V to W, right? So it's J, and then you use I to go from W to 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 V I, and here you use uh, B tilde, maybe with minus sign, and here you use B sub I. B sub e. And so the, the moment map equation says that the product, so this times this plus this times this plus this times this is equal to zero. And so the moment map mu c equals to zero at the vertex i is equivalent to the d squared equals to zero condition for this for this uh, complex. And so uh, so this is what I call the canonical maybe tautological complex. This is a generalization of the object we called S for the ADHM construction. And so now, so we can view CI as an element of uh, Quiverian K theory. So from this formula, this will be something like W plus the sum over all edges um, which start at E at I V of target plus the sum over all edges which end at S minus V I minus V I and then you need to twist them by some powers of Q inverse so Q remember is uh, Q1 Q2 so that reflects the, the the symmetry that so this uh, so this reflects the uh, that C star symmetry. And some of these arrows carry the additional weight of the symmetry. Uh, so again, um, depending on the choice of the stability condition, which which I didn't specify here, which has to be correlated with the choice of stability condition for my uh, which which was made for for the uh, to define the modulus space of torsion free shifts. Uh, this complex will only have cohomology in two places in, as, as, um, as opposed to possible three. So it's a three-term complex, but it only has uh, cohomology in, in degree zero and, and one. And so what we do, we represent the churn class. So if you like, take a churn class of this uh, complex. So it's a, actually it's a difference of churn classes of its cohomologies. So let me write it now as the sum. So let me introduce the virtual churn roots for those um, uh, for those uh, uh, cohomology groups. And so now I can define the, my G class. So the G class is the product, is the ratio. So it's the product over A, the Y observable of I, uh, when you substitute X plus Xi plus IA in the numerator, and then divide by the product of, of uh, A prime. Say it in. Yeah, OK. And then product over all i. So, so that's, that's the formula. So now let me erase. Thanks. I'm still integrating. Integration is still over the quiver variety. So the uh, so the point is that the shifts of the argument of the y 
observables are the churn roots of the uh, tautological complex. <laughs> should, should I agree? Fundamental matter, yes. Uh, yes, you're, very, you're absolutely right. It shows up here, e to the me, e to the minus me. So these churn roots, they're uh, both equivariant, I mean, they, they equivalent churn, they're equivalent classes. So they contain both C numbers, numbers like m's or, or epsilon's, but they also, they also contain actual cohomology classes of this modular space. Now, when we uh, localize with respect to this torus, Absolutely, you're absolutely right. You're absolutely right. You're absolutely right. Yes, 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 yes. It is the localization of something else, and we will get to that. <laughs> so, uh, uh, absolutely right. Um, so, of course, the, uh, I mean, the, the only correct formula in the world is the formula when you integrate one. <laughs> <laughs> Everything else is just the consequence of that. So, <laughs> so the uh, 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 the point is, but but here I'm, I'm you see this is a kind of an in, uh, this is a kind of an intermediate uh, formula because at the the output of this formula is is some uh, cohomology or K-theory class on that sp of that space. But now if I take this this expectation value, so so include that modular space in, into the game, then uh, together is the integral of one over the modular space of quiver Cross instantons. And so that everything else is just a localization <laughs> applied to, 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 uh, to that formula. So uh, I will introduce this space now, and well, in, in, a, in a short while. But, uh, and, and so that will become clear. Everything else will become clear. In particular, the absence of poles will be the consequence of the compactness theorem of uh, applied to that space. Now, remember that this space is non-compact. The Nakajima variety is non-compact. But, but we have a, the C star, the C star group which rescales the, uh, the, the uh, so that group is important because the, it, it's, uh, it sort of takes care of the non-compact part of the Nakajima variety. So that integral can be localized to a compact set. It cannot be always localized to, to just points. Uh, that's, and that's something which, which is uh, where the distinction between the QQ characters, so this is, this is the QQ character. So this is a QQ character. Uh, with highest weight W. So as in the representation theory of Youngians and, 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 and the fine algebras, the, the highest weight is not an, in, it's not an integral weight. Or maybe I forgot how it's called. Maybe it's called loop weight. It's, a, it's, it's really a collection of evaluation parameters. So these Ws should be viewed as evaluation parameters for uh, representations of some uh, non commutative algebra. Uh, so uh, there is another object in the literature called QT character, which was introduced by Nakajima, which is a T deformation of Q character of Kirillov and Rishitikin. And uh, for the A type quivers, they, they are the same. But for the uh, for the other types, they, they differ. They differ, and they differ precisely by the fact that 
in this formula, my y functions are actually in, they're inside the integral. Whereas in the Kojima's approach, in some sense, they, they, are, they are taken outside. And so that, that gives the important distinction. But I think that's what you get by, by, by computing that part. If you, if you just compute this. No, no, it's not the part of the equation. Well, it's, uh, it's, it's, these are the polynomial, Poincare polynomials of the fixed loci, which are compact. So th that's, what, that's, what, that's what he has. And, and that's what this thing computes by when you look at it. Um, OK, so um, now. The name QQ character, of course, is a kind of funny name, but uh, it was forced on me by, by the fact that, well, there, was a, there were already Q characters of Kirill and Shetikian, and these guys reduced to those when you take a limit when one of the epsilons go, goes to zero. And so then this Q, but the Q remains, so this parameter Q remains. And so this QQ stands for the fact that we have two Q parameters in the, in the game. We, we, it will be Q parameters in the K theory, here there are epsilon parameters, but I'm kind of, uh, using this terminology interchangeably. OK. Let me give you a few examples. Yes. In, in yesterday's example, there was epsilon 1, epsilon 2, epsilon 3. Right. How, how do those show Very up? good, very good. So, so if you go back to the simplest quiver, uh, let me keep that picture. Uh, so, so that's why I want to give you uh, simple st the few examples that w w when we'll the translation will become clear. So the, f the simplest examples are A-type theories. So there are three classes I wanted to, 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 to tell you about. So the first case is a one case with a general weight. The second case is uh, a zero hat fundamental. So fundamental character means that your highest weight, the corresponding dimension vector is zero everywhere except at one vertex. And then you have only one uh, evaluation parameter, which, which, which I actually call x. So then, um, so a0 hat is this quiver. You call it Jordan? Yeah. But uh, it's, it's, a cl it's a classification of Blinking diagrams. So, so uh, for fine blinking diagrams, the label uh, tells you the number of vertices. For a fine, somehow the label is number of vertices minus one. So it's, but then you put a hat. And um, uh, it was one more case in the A type. Thi oh yes, uh, I forgot what which uh, what other examples are interesting. There's always something else. I forgot. What, 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 what. OK, so uh, for the A1 type theory, first of all, the parameters which we can have, uh, so there is an M space, which, which, which uh, um, for good theories, is when m is equal to twice the number of colors. So, so, that, uh, so this is a1 case. And then we can organize the masses into a polynomial, which is related to a Greenfield's polynomial. So these are m uh, f in this case, a 1 to m. And uh, the formula for the 
OK, so the Nakajima variety in this case, so the, we, the Nakajima variety, A1, W, V. So in this case, we have the only one number for dimension W and one number for dimension V is what you must have learned from, from the lectures of Andre. Do you remember what it is? <laughs> Anyone? So, th so this is, uh, in so you have the framing space. No, no, the Kajima variety, the, pr the parameters of the Kajima variety are W and V. So, so we, uh, so, so we have the theory, the parameters of the theory are M and N, but we won't write a QQ Q Q Q Q Q character, and so that depends on V and, and, and W. So that's, so it's a Grassmannian of V-dimensional planes in W-dimensional space, and then we take the cotangent of that. Good. So now we will be. We want to integrate over this grass, over the Grassmannian something, and the the torus, the symmetry torus in this case is so what we have the C star which rescales the cotangent fiber, and when we have the the maximal torus uh, of G GLW. Actually, minus one because uh, the center, the center in W in, in GLW, is killed by the center in, in, in GLV. And so the fixed points Oh yes, sorry. So one important thing is that here the space is non-empty only when V is not greater than W. So, so in this case, this formula will actually be finite because you only have a finite number of terms for which you have a non-empty space to integrate over. So only V less than or equal to W will contribute. Uh, I guess the Lin is not in audience, but uh, if he were in audience, he would have asked what happens when, when your set of is, is empty. What do you assign to that? So if, if, if V is zero, uh, then uh, everything here is kind of trivial. And so what I put, except that my space W is still non-trivial. And so my complex consists of just a vector space W. Everything else is equal to zero. And so the first term, the term with V equals to zero, here contains the pure numerator where psi plus are simply the uh, equivalent parameters for the group GLWI. So that's actually the first <laughs> case which, which uh, we need to figure out. That's, so that's why it's this, this, this uh, sum starts with this term. So this term corresponds to, to V equals to 0. So in that sense, uh, for when v equals to 0, I actually view it as a point, not as an empty set, I guess. It is a point. Good. Is it a point? Yes, I, right. I mean, there is no. Zero dimensional subspace, yes. So, so it's uh, right. It's, uh, it's like a subset of an empty set. So it's, a, it's that's already, that's a, that's a non, non empty set. Right, so, so when V is equal to zero, so the homes of a zero dimensional space to, well, yeah, the space of homes from W to zero dimensional space is, a, well, it's a zero dimensional vector space. Okay, is it a point or an empty set? So it's, a, it's a point, okay, good, so it's a point. <laughs> so M W zero is a point. Okay, there is a point. <laughs> okay, now if when, w, when V is non-zero, then we are on the, from the ground. So what are the fixed points? So the fixed points of C star, which is scales T star, just sit on the, it's a just a zero section, it's a Grassmannian itself. And then the fixed points of that torus 
are the planes, the uh, coordinate planes. So these are, so there are W choose V. coordinate planes. So uh, my integral in this case will become the sum over these choices. So they are labeled by the ways of decomposing the set of indices 1 up to w into two disjoint subsets. So let's say of, of cardinality v and w minus v. So these are the fixed points. So the fixed points are in one-to-one -one correspondence with this decomposition. So you choose, so you have coordinate axes, which are the eigen, eigen lines of your uh, uh, generic GLW element. Uh, GL, yes. Uh, and now you choose out of this W axis, you choose V, and that's, uh, and span a V-dimensional plane with this axis. So, so that gives you a specific fixed point inside the Grassmannian. And now we need to compute the, characters of the tangent space of the, of the, of the tangent space on the Kojima variety, and then the, uh, so, well, we can compute the tangent space to the Grassmannian, and then the tangent space on the Kojima variety, and then the tangent space, right. Sorry, we need, to, yeah. Uh, so, that's, so, uh, Maybe I shouldn't do this. Maybe it's an exercise. So, 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 okay. So it was an exercise. Okay. So, so then, evaluation of that part of my integral so it's decomposition will give something like the product over uh, I inside the set capital I J inside the complementary set. And you take Wi minus Wj. So these are the weights of the tangent space to the Grassmannian. And then we shift them by uh, minus epsilon 1 minus epsilon 2. That's the tangent weights to the cotangent bundle of Grassmannian, including the C star action on the cotangent. And then we put, then we shift them by epsilon 1, so which makes it minus epsilon 1, minus epsilon 2, and then. Um, so as you can see, it doesn't matter which, wh wh what, what argument I put in here, because uh, things are symmetric. And then uh, we'll take the product. So then you need to compute them, this tautological complex, uh, which and express it in terms of the. So I call it canonical, but actually it's tautological because, as you as you will see, or maybe you already you've seen that, it is related to the tautological bundles of the Grassmannian, in in this case. And so what you will find is that you'll get the product of y plus w inside the set, and product over j not inside the set of p of x plus w j divided by. And here I forgot. Sorry. Shift by epsilon. So, uh, and then there is Q to the number of terms. So that's the formula. So that's a general QQ character for the A1 uh, quiver. So there are two, as you can see, there are two to the W terms. And so you should you should think of this as a as a some kind of a deformed character of a representation of SL2 in the tensor product of W copies of a two-dimensional representation. Um, now so I claim that it has no, this expression has no poles in X when you substitute it into the integral over the modular space of instantons. So when you use it as an operator in the a one type gauge theory, but I said nothing about the poles in W variables. And so if I if you are nasty, you can actually tune W parameters so that this expression will acquire poles. 
And this has to do with the fact that uh, so tuning W parameters means choosing smaller and smaller uh, sub tori in, 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 uh, uh, in the maximal torus of your symmetry group. And so if you're, if, you, if you're not careful, for example, if you take an empty torus, again, empty or trivial yeah, tri torus, <laughs> then the fixed point set will be all of the cotangent on the Grassmannian, which is clearly non-compact. And so once you have non-compact spaces, then you, the localization formulas will give you poles. But it's interesting that sometimes you can actually tune parameters already in this formula in such a way that the fixed point set is still compact. So the expression is actually non-singular. But the fixed point set is non, the fixed points are non-isolated. Well, for example, again, if you forget about Ws, you only keep this C star. Your fixed point set will be all of the Grassmannian, which is definitely a compact manifold. So the expression will be finite, but it will, be, so it means, it means sending all Ws to zero. Each individual term seems to diverge, but I claim that in the sum, there is no divergence. But what this expression will look like, it will look like some kind of now differential polynomial applied to y's and 1 over y's. So these QQ characters, sometimes they involve not only y's at the shifted variables, but also the derivatives. So yes, that's what I just said. So, so, so uh, s specifying these additional parameters, making them, them uh, for example, well, uh, as an example, I set all Ws to be equal to zero. So then individual term blows up. Or you can, well, you can, uh, well, this is, this is cohomological theory. So, so here, the analog of root of unity is when the differences of Ws are proportional to epsilon. And so that's, that's a, well, Absolutely, but that means. But that what it means is that yes, it means the different subtorus. Right. So so it's a it's a subtorus which has some angle. So it's a, is is uh, so you choose some subgroup in in this product of C stars which is at some angle in in uh, in these directions, and so that may or may so sometimes it leads to non-compact fixed sets, and so that means actual singularity, or it may lead to non-isolated but compact set. And so then it means that uh, there is no singularity, but the expression is gets, getting more complicated. And but it, it just depends on the formula. If you're doing the principle of sub-set. Absolutely, absolutely. The so then, the the absolutely so. Absolutely. So, so this size, so in, in the A-type case, we are lucky that for generic choice of covariant parameters, these churn roots are actual numbers. They actual, I mean, they express in terms of current parameters. But once we go away from the A, a uh, world, <laughs> uh, the, the, uh, the non-isolated fixed point sets become uh, ubiquitous. What's the term? Ubiquitous? <laughs> I cannot pronounce it, and I cannot spell it even. Uh, unavoidable, so <laughs> unavoidable. And then these psi's are actual cohomology classes, so they're new potent, they're uh, uh, new potent, uh, if you like, variables. So when you integrate over them, then you produce, you will generate derivatives of y's. And that's where the Q, Q characters differ from QT characters. But I just wanted to say that you don't have to go to these complicated cases like G, G type or, and so on. You can already see that at a, in, the, in, the, in the example of uh, in the A series. Just uh, take a non-fundamental character. All right, so that's one example. And it's a good time to go for lunch. So let's uh, reconvene at uh, 2. Okay. All right. <laughs>